Open Air are now offering super fast fibre to the home to our customers, enabling speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second. This video explains a fibre to the home installation for service providers and customers. Throughout the video, we will explain what is involved in the first site visit at a customer's premises and what factors will determine if a customer will be connected to fibre to the home that day. The installation of fibre to the home is different to fibre to the cabinet and DSL, so it's important that the customer's expectations are set throughout the order and installation process and they know what to expect. This helps ensure more orders can be completed successfully and improves the customer experience. As a technician, it's uh, my job to connect a customer to the fibre to the home network once the order comes in. Every job, every house, every customer is different. On the first visit, we'll treat it as a survey. Initially, when we arrive on site, when we greet the customer, we will bring them out and we'll show them the drop point where the cable is fed from and we would assess what route it's to be taken from there. So whether it needs to go pole up the road, whether it needs to go underground. First of all, if there's a duct in place, we would need to make sure that the duct is unblocked. If it is unblocked, then we can proceed with running the fibre through the duct. If the duct is blocked, the customer will then have to get that cleared by themselves. And if there is no duct provided on the property, it may need an overhead solution. So it may need poling and come in from the pole over onto the fascia of the house. So the three obstacles that we run into on the overhead solution will be trees in the way of the, the poling. Plant growth on the poling, which uh, open air would treat over a five day course and poles being in the neighbouring gardens, but we would need permission to come onto the neighbouring gardens to service the house from that pole. If the house is 50 metres or more away from the distribution point or from the nearest service pole, Open Air will then provide the customer with a pole on the property. With the ETU, which is the external termination unit, which is where the cable from the underground network is brought in to the building itself, and it separates the network from the actual building. We would prefer that as point of entry, but what we can do a lot of times is take it out of the ETU and find a better point of entry for it that'll suit the customer and enter the cable then. And we would never run cables into attics or install in attics. Once we've got the cable to the house, we will then discuss with the customer the most suitable placement for the equipment and the cabling. So we would probably advise the customer to bring the, the modem to the centre of the house to get better Wi-Fi coverage and so on. But it'll be dependent on the cabling route, if that will allow it for aesthetic purposes. So when bringing the cable into the building, we would also make sure that there's a double socket for the optical network terminal and the modem itself. If there's a hole in the building already, we would, we would use that existing hole. If not, we would drill a small hole ourselves. We would obviously make sure that there's no obstructions like tiles and skirting boards and so on. When the cable's entered into the building, it hits the NTU, which is the network termination unit, and that's where the fibre is then spliced and made off into a coupling unit. From there, we would take it into the ONT, which is the optical network terminal, and that's where the light is converted to Ethernet. The Ethernet signal will flow from the ONT to the modem via Ethernet cable. It is then broadcast from the modem through Wi-Fi. If the customer is looking to relocate the modem, it may incur a fee which will all be dependent on the operator. So at this property we've been successfully able to uh, connect the customer via the underground duct that's been in place. So now the customer is able to enjoy for to their own broadband. There are a number of technical considerations or a checklist that the engineer must look at on the first day, which is the site survey. It's important that customers understand that the first visit is a site survey and that they may not be connected that day. So to recap, outside the property, if a duct is available, are there blockages or obstructions? 
If overhead drop is required, are there trees obstructing the route? Is there plant life on the pole? Is the pole on private property? If the customer does not wish to provide a duct, poles will be provided by open air. Inside the property, access for equipment must be clear of blockages. We don't install in attics. Drilling a hole may be required for access. Our job in customer service is to help explain the process clearly to customers and to help make the installation process a positive experience for them. 